Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Stefano. Um, uh, some people call me Steph. Uh, I'm a research engineer in the bioengineering department at Stanford and also in the Department of Surgery at uh, UC San Francisco. So I'm very happy to be here this morning talking to you all about real world data. So real world data is uh, very fashionable right now. Uh, we live in the era of big data where we're continually collecting all this information and building these very large data sets. And then new laws, at least in the U.S., like the 21st Century Cures Act, are also driving adoption of real-world data and real-world evidence in decision-making processes, not just in uh, regulation, but also you see it in quality improvement initiatives in hospitals um, and also in investment decisions in industry. And so uh, to define real world data a little bit, real world data is very broad. It's basically observations that are captured outside of the context of clinical trials. Um, so some of the sources that people think about uh, when they talk about real world data are things like case reports that are published in the literature that's been around for a while. Uh, something that's developing and being implemented right now is electronic health record data and patient registries. And then social media is also another case of uh, real world data that's probably a little bit more experimental uh, right now. So real world data, a lot of people think about it in the post market setting, but it is applicable across the lifestyle of uh, drugs and medical devices, so medical products. Um, and here, uh, basically what I'm saying is it can accelerate R&D um, and also regulatory decision making. So if you think about research and development or early in the life, side, life cycle, right, uh, you can use it for things like need identification. So here you're showing an unmet medical need. Um, and that can be you know, generating a hypothesis about what you should build. The other thing uh, you might be doing with that is using it to apply for an um, IND or an HDE application where you're basically getting permission to run a study in humans. Uh, then uh, you know everybody knows about the post-marketing where you're talking about a phase four study and doing post-market surveillance on drugs and medical devices. So, you know, uh, I would say when you're talking about uh, annotation and a lot of the real world data, drugs and uh, especially molecular biology get a lot of love and devices are kind of like the uh, unwanted stepchild of the uh, biotech family here. Uh, I'm pretty privileged to be able to work in both the space of drugs and also medical devices. My observation is that the state of the art of real world data for molecular biology and drugs is pretty far ahead of medical devices. And the reason why is basically because a lot of the key information for medical devices is unstructured and unlinked. So uh, an example of how it's unstructured is that something very basic, like the indications for a medical device or the intended use. I have this device, what is it used for? You know, give me some terms that I can use to look something up or I can use to do a query in an EHR. Um, there is no data set out there like that. Uh, nothing like a CIDR or something like that for medical devices. Um, and then even where you do have cases where the data is pretty well structured, so here I'm thinking about something like the Open FDA APIs for medical devices, right? You have a bunch of linked data there, but there it's still all siloed. You can't really connect that to anything and do anything with it, right? So it just kind of sits there in its little silo just being there doing regulatory things. Um, so uh, the question I came here with is, you know, can we use some of the uh, annotation tools here to basically start structuring uh, some of this uh, medical device data, in particular uh, linking devices and indications, and how transferable are those methods going to be? Um, so I, I, I have a sense that the answer to that question is you know, all of the above of yes, uh, no, and maybe so. I think in some cases it might work seamlessly, in others maybe not so. I think there are a few challenges that can make it difficult uh, to do some of the annotation here. So first, uh, the medical devices ecosystem is very large and complex. This pie chart is showing you uh, the number of drug products on the market versus the number of medical device products on the market. And there's about an order of magnitude difference. Um, second, you, uh, with these indications for medical devices, you can end up with a very, very complex uh, inclusion-exclusion criteria. So here you're talking about complex medical histories. Uh, 
um, demographic variables. Uh, and you can get these very oddly specific indications. And then you can have something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum where it's not very specific at all. Um, and then finally, even if you did have something that worked, it would be impossible to tell because there is currently no gold standard set of annotations for medical device indications. And as far as I know, there's no annotation guidelines. So that brings us to uh, what I'm here proposing for the project. Um, so I'll start with the specific games. Aim one is to develop some annotation guidelines for uh, medical device indications. Aim two is to produce a small, modest gold standard set of uh, annotations. So here I'm thinking maybe like 20 to 50 you know, indication statements, nothing uh, crazy or huge. And then three, assess the performance of some of these annotation tools. <laughs> so, you know, and, and then I would also like to keep the scope pretty narrow here. Uh, you know, there are lots of medical devices out here. So, you know, boil it down to uh, high risk medical devices. These are class three devices. So, think of life sustaining devices and implants. Generally, the descriptions and the approval statements of these are pretty well written. And, um, you know, you want to get the indications right for these, um, and you probably care if somebody's using them off-label. So here's an example of what some of the data looks like. This is for an implantable uh, bronchial valve. This is a class three device. Uh, it's probably annotated quite poorly. I just you know, highlighted some text here to give people a sense of what these look like. This isn't uh, the easiest one. Um, as you can see, I think there's five different types of uh, entities in there. Uh, it's also not the most complex. It, it certainly does get harder than this, but I didn't want to show you guys that and scare you off. Um, and finally, uh, the uh, ultimate goals for the project. Um, you know, this is really all about kind of improving the medical device data ecosystem. I think that there's a lot of research out there that could be done and a lot of research that isn't be, being done, uh, you know, because of problems like this. In fact, I know a couple of people who have projects that they just didn't do because you know something like indications linked to devices is just not out there and is not available. Um, the other thing, of course, would be to engage the bio curation uh, community, especially people who are interested in medical devices. I think this is you know pretty much the wild west in greenfield. There's not a lot that I've seen done here, and I think that there's a lot of work to do and a lot of. Uh, you know, impact to be had here. And then uh, finally, you know, experiment with uh, new annotation tools. You know, I think we all, you know, or most of us like playing around with new software and seeing what stuff can do. And, uh, you know, when I looked at the applications here, I saw that a lot of tools had been done and uh, produced here. And you know, if anybody's working on anything or anybody has anything that can help with this, I'd be very happy to uh, be a tester and to learn how to use your tools. Um, so that is it. There is my uh, email and my Twitter. Um, and I guess uh, I have a minute and a half left, so I will leave that time for questions if anybody has any.